go back? Right, we're live, live, everybody. Would you like me to go back, Fergus? No, 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 it's the angle of the camera. Oh, the angle of the camera. We're just trying to make a nice picture for you of the buffalo coming across the yellowing plains here of the southern Maasai Mara. A large herd of buffalo uh, traveling in a line. Some of them have crossed the Laga to our right-hand side. If you're wondering what a Laga is, it's basically a little river or stream. I'm not sure why we use the term Laga here. Uh, I'm not sure why we use the term drainage line in South Africa rather than river or stream, but you know, these are the vagaries of safari guides throughout Africa. Now the buffalo, I used to think were not going to take too much of a hit on account of the fact that there's so much else here to eat. But you know those three lionesses we've been looking at, they have killed a buffalo very close to their den site, a big, what looked like a big, big adult, and a calf. And so obviously the buffalo do get taken from time to time here, especially when the wildebeest have well headed south. And they're all just a little bit confused by us, much like the buffalo up in South Africa, who, despite seeing us almost on a daily basis, still look deeply surprised when we pull up at the Juma waterhole in the dry season. I'm sure you're probably doing that on drive every afternoon these days. These chaps look very much the same. Surprised to see us, almost alarmed, nervous, don't really know what to do. Should they come past? Should they turn around and run for the hills? Now one or two are becoming brave enough and they're going to give us a wide berth and walk around us. Justin, you want to know if life as a buffalo would be a pleasant life. Well, Justin, I do actually give consideration to these things myself. I think that if you had the brain of a buffalo, then I suppose life as a buffalo would be relatively okay. I think life as a buffalo juma, uh, much more, much less pleasant than life as a buffalo in the Maasai Mara. Now that's because, of course, the lions there tend to specialize in eating you, where they don't so much here, but they certainly will eat you here if they can from time to time. Uh, I think being a, uh, a human brain trapped in a buffalo's body, well, that would be quite interesting because I reckon that, uh, well, being a human brain in just about any of the animals out here would be quite fun. Although you couldn't talk to anybody uh, uh, and they couldn't talk back to you, I think to have the physical capabilities of these animals would be quite interesting. So, for example, uh, I know that this is slightly ridiculous, but were you to be, let's pretend all of those buffalo looking at us had the brains of a human, they certainly wouldn't be afraid of us. They'd just walk past, give us a nod, say hi, uh, possibly butt us with their horns every so often. But there's no ways that a buffalo with a brain of a human would be taken by a lion, especially if a couple of its mates had the brains of a human. They'd ambush the lions. They'd know that all they had to do was push home a proper attack and the lions would run away and leave them alone. Likewise, uh, those cheetah musketeers that you've been looking at with Scott, if the wildebeest that they eat had anything like a tiny smattering of human gumption, they would know that all they had to do was turn and face those cheetah, give them a bit of a chase and they'd back off. Instead they don't, they run around in blind panic and get eaten. But of course, the reason that they don't need a human brain is that they don't have to. And you know, the, the biggest physiological strain on a human being is maintaining this enormous brain that we have. Well, I know some people with very small brains, but you know, on average, we have a much larger brain than anything else. And so it would be impossible for a buffalo to maintain our brain with its body and its diet and its way of life. Chastity, you say, what animal would I like to be for just a day? Um, I think I'd probably like to be a batelier or perhaps one of the vultures, a lappet-faced vulture, because I think for one day you'd cover the most ground, you'd be able to see the most things by being a vulture. You could fly so very far and see some really interesting things. Whereas if I was a buffalo just wandering across these plains, I wouldn't go very far, I'd get quite tired, I'd have to lie down, vomit my breakfast into my mouth and re-chew it, and I just think that would be very unpleasant. Not so, Fergus. Mm.
Uh, and Rebecca says that that buffalo thinks <laughs> and that sounds delicious and started to drool at the thought of re-chewing its breakfast, which it will be doing very shortly. So funny how we have now, I mean, I feel a little bit bad about it, but we have totally arrested the movement of this herd. The rest of the herds crossed the river and they're on the other side, just kind of walking gently across the plains. This bunch have decided we are far too terrifying. Now one or two braver ones are coming towards us. Unsurprisingly, the young, the teenagers, much braver than the rest, or foolhardy. And it just has to show how cautious the animals have to be out here. All right, we're going to move out of the way of these beefaloes. So let's head back across to the five cheetahs with the uh, cupcakes Dyson.